Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the opening ceremony of the 54th Hegemon World Championship. And again this year, we're trying to find who will write history, who will go to Wikipedia, who will become the 2023 World Champion of Backgammon. <laughs> Enjoy this week, play lots of backgammon, go for glory. I wish you all the best and good luck. Backgammongalaxy.com is custom made for the backgammon community. Boost your skills with AI analysis, compete for rating points or galaxy coins, play in the browser or download our Backgammon Galaxy app for free and become the next Grandmaster. BackgammonGalaxy.com is the official sponsor of Nordic Open and the Backgammon World Championship. I've learned so much more. I feel like I'm a better player now just because I came to this tournament. Just because I watched people, I asked questions. Even though you're not playing yourself, there's a lot of exciting games to watch and learn from. And it's, uh, you know, it's a, I find it a, a quite inspiring and, and fun uh, community. When it comes to tournaments, this is where you have to be. Some things organizationally and with the rooms and maybe time of year can be changed. But 17 point matches and here in Monaco, with the amount of money, that's what it needs to be. The nice thing about Monte Carlo is it's also in the summer holidays, so it's easier to have the kids do something else. A lot of other tournaments are during the school year, and those are harder to make it to. The men should not dress like in shorts and, and flip-flops. That They should have a dress code. And that would eliminate some players, but they have to understand where they are. I think there's a good variety of events. Um, you know, including things like speed gammon and, and playing one-point matches, I mean, and doubles, and I, I, I think the offerings are very good. I don't kind of like the schedule. It's this year. We usually have a lot to play and so, but now, if you lose your round in everything what you play, there is nothing left to play. Because trust me, I come here to play, not to go on the beach. A lot of people don't go swimming in the sea here. I think it's a big mistake. <laughs> And now look, I'm registering five different jackpots and speed and there is nobody to play because they are all outside drinking. I think it's perfect. Not too short, not too long, just perfect. Time for a lot of socializing, doing things. I wish it was longer. I'd rather, I'd, like to, I'd love to start another event tomorrow. I really would. I think it's exact, the best, the best format in the world. We need to have glamour in the game. I think it needs to have more money and we need to bring in more prestige, whether it's celebrities or poker players, or high, high rollers, you know, people who, they may only play casually, but they want them to win something. And I think that if we made more luster, we could do what poker and certain other games have done to create the glamour that this game used to have in the 1970s and 80s. I miss that gambling atmosphere, yes. It was fun. I am a money player first, and I came here for title now, this year. But in general, I, I, th I find it more fun when money games are uh, available and when it's a lot of gambling in the room. In this room was at least 20 times more money 20 years ago. Now it's not that much. I would make it like a chess tournament. You know, the high level chess tournaments now do not allow any gadgets in the room. When you're in the room, you should just play. It's too late to analyze. Whatever you didn't know before, it's already, you know, it's gone. It would be nice to have some kind of uh, experts have a sitting and panel and discussing positions, something like that. I wish tournament was bigger as with money price. The entry should be three, four thousand euro. For example, for 20 years ago, it was one thousand, still one thousand. Poker tournament is ten thousand. Even it's ten thousand, thousand players come. So why not in Bagamon? I've been discussing with Mark that so here this money card everything's expensive. In the end, the hotel goes away with all the money. If you could find a way to put that money in the price pool, that would probably be a great thing for backgammon. If you raise the fees, more there are going to be less players. If you lower the fees, then you may get more undesirable players to come. What we have now is like maybe 200 people. Back in the day, it was over 500 players in the tournament. 
and that was in the main tournament. Actually, last year they had 207 in the championship. It was the first time in 15 years we had over 200 for the world championship. And actually, I give most of that credit to Galaxy and their team. What they've done to keep backgammon going during COVID, they gained a huge ton of support and the fact that they bought the world championship after unfortunately Patty passed, I think it was a great thing for backgammon and this specifically this tournament. When I first arrived, I think there maybe was, could have been 350 players the first time I came. For many people that are here, these rates are comfortable, they're within their lifestyle, but for some, some others to add that extra 100 players, uh, things would have to be a little little less expensive and I don't see that happening in Monaco. In Monaco it's everything expensive, it's expensive to sleep, to eat, to everything. And probably that's why a lot of good players, they don't come. If this is something you can do and you're thinking about doing it, I think everybody who loves this game needs to experience this once because there's a uniqueness in the air, there's a uniqueness to this environment that you, you really can't find anywhere else, or at least I haven't found anywhere else. Of course, what's not to like about this setting? Especially if you haven't been here before, the sights, uh, it, you know, while you're not married, the women, and you know, it, and it's just beautiful, the ocean. And... I know there are a lot of people, they come and combine the playing with uh, going outside, with going on the beach, and so, but that's not me. Because if I want to go on the beach, I don't go on Monte Carlo. Monaco is so beautiful. It's hard to match a place like this. It's very attractive for families as well because the families can go out and do things. There's so much to do here. If the husband or wife is playing, the rest of them can go out and enjoy themselves. I've talked with my wife about coming sometimes, but you know, the truth is, I don't want to be responsible for entertaining her because I just want to play. It's a trade-off because we all like having that emotional support. You like having that person that you're partnered with in life to go back to in the room. But on the other hand, there's a little bit of sightseeing. There's a little bit of swimming out at the pool. Maybe go swim at the ocean, but we're here to play backgammon. This is where the rich and famous are and it's very nice coming here. I would not mind if the locale changed on occasion because I'd like to go somewhere else in the same place every year, but I don't mind coming here. It's, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind if they alternated it like between a couple of different locations or three or four locations once every four years. The history of the World Championship of Bagaman is such that probably I would say it still should be Monte Carlo. And I'm not a fan of the city, but because of the history of Bagaman tournament, because of the gambling element because of everything. Even this posh atmosphere, it fits Bagaman. You know, those Ferraris outside of hotel, everything. It kind of fits, fits the environment. So I don't know if this is the best place, but I don't know the better place, so. <laughs> I love Dubai. It's like something else, you know, than other people. It's a clean city, it's a safe city. Oh, here no. So please, please, please change this Monte Carlo World Championship. Make it Dubai World Championship, <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> the brand World Championship should stay in Monte Carlo as a respect to our elders who started this year and none of them uh, is with us anymore. On the other hand, moving it to another location around the world probably would bring more players, would be less costly for the organization and for the player side as well. But still, I think World Championship should stay in Monte Carlo. If it was moved somewhere else, I, I would still go. I wouldn't say it has to be here, but I think that there is a certain buzz to Monaco, to Monte Carlo. There's just an excitement to this area that I don't know why they would ever move it. And I think Mark Olson has brought a lot of energy to this. He's brought a lot of new people into this. And I think it's probably even less likely that this tournament will ever move than I would have said it was three or four years ago. For a while, it was going downhill a little bit, but I think this backgammon galaxy took over the tournament. It's on its way back up. It looks like more players, more excitement, more events, streaming. Uh, worldwide, you know, it seems like there's a lot of excitement about the World Championship again. It's a good time for backgammon. The new Galaxy setup is, is fine. I thought maybe they would ruin it. Patty Rubin did a terrific job, but Mark Olson is doing a terrific job too, and even better in carrying on our memory. Patty always ran a great tournament. I love Patty Rubin. I have nothing negative to say about it except for one thing. I didn't like the boards. There were these old, no. cheap, plousy, <laughs> plastic boards, 
and I used to bring my own board, and most, most of us did. Now we come and sit down, and the Galaxy wooden boards are at the tables. They're gorgeous, beautiful boards. It cost them a lot of money to do that, just to make it more pleasant for the players. But the, that's the point. They're doing everything to make this a, a class act. First of all, when Mark came last year, I was so pleased with new boards. That's like first thing what was so important to change. For years in backgammon championship, there were some matters to be done better. For example, the backgammon boards. We, before backgammon Galaxy, we were using boards which were created maybe 20 years ago. When Galaxy took it over, of course, they wanted to come with many new things and the first thing you see when you go inside the playing hall is the gaming equipment. So even changing the equipment made a big difference. When you come as a player and travel to Monte Carlo and you sit by one of these tables, uh, I understand that, that people are happy about it because it's just coherency, you know, people want coherency in everything. It's comforting, it's easy on the eye, everything is just in a, in a nice flow and I think that also affects people's uh, play in a good way because our, our overall mission is just to get this wonderful game out to as many people as possible. Mark is doing an excellent job and I really support him because he's trying to do something bigger, 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 improve always something next year and so this is awesome. That's why I like these tournaments. I go to other tournaments because he's doing exactly that job. I don't feel that uh, other people do the same job and I feel like when I went to a tournament six years ago and I would go there now, it's going to be kind of the same. There's many things I like much more about it now. I feel that it's much better organized. The playing equipment is much better. I think it's advertised better. Galaxy came with lots of investment. The streaming, they give so much value to it, so they want it to be the best way. Now they stream many matches every day, and it's more advertised and it's more professionally done. And they have great commentary. When Mark Olson took this over, and he was so smart to bring in the two of you, you, you and Tara, to, do, to set up the streaming. If you go to my Facebook site and you see the picture of all the equipment you have, you had to have a private jet to bring the equipment. <laughs> and then he brings in the best commentators in the world, you and me. Hey. I mean, how good can it be? With Galaxy's involvement, the world uh, started getting more info and better info from the tournament. But I've never seen a tournament better run with better staff than this tournament. I think one of our great strengths is that you can go into one of these events where, where we'll most likely be and you can meet uh, the owner, you can meet a, a lot of people from the team and just talk to us, you know. We take all the feedback from people very seriously and embed it into our platform as much as possible. But recently, they are more focused on running serious back in tournament. In the tournament atmosphere, a lot of things changed culturally. It was a completely different environment. You would think only 20 years ago, people used to be able to smoke in the room. I remember my first tournament, uh, I was playing with some guy from Israel. He was smoking cigar in my face for the whole time. That was unbearable. I was dizzy, I was like sick. Uh, also, people played without clock. And they all were saying, oh, we were all quick players. In reality, match could take five, six hours. I have no idea how any event was completed at the time. It was crazy. In the early days of playing in Monte Carlo, I played in matches, four-hour matches. I had an eight-hour match one time. They could go crazy long. And I think for a tournament director, clocks keep it much, much more manageable. Back in the days, you could play a match and it was talking non-stop with a guy, you know, and there was more chatting atmosphere, you know. Now it's headphones on. Focus. Before, this tournament was more relaxing. They had a golf tournament, tennis tournament, and a big gala dinner with a fantastic show. We had always on the Wednesday a gala dinner, and we did an auction. At that time, it was 64 players left, and they had an auction selling the players. You can bid on the players. An auction is where, when you get to the round of 64, then those players are auctioned off so that you can have an opportunity to buy a player or buy a group of players. And there were like hundreds of thousands of um, monies in the pool for the auction. So the Galadinus was a black tie. Uh, and also in here, it was more of a dress code, you know. There was, you couldn't be in here with shorts. Absolutely, I missed the gala dinner. I missed being able to dress up 
and seeing everybody in a different light. There was one nice thing that I don't think is about to come back. They had a, a big sort of black tie style uh, dinner, you know, and they had a show and not everyone went and you had to pay a little extra to go to that. There was more money back then. That, that dinner ticket maybe cost 150 euro, you know, and now if you tell, tell all the players have, you have to pay 150 euro extra, they start so no, I don't have the money. And I understand why they had to cut it off. That was like James Bond kind of uh, Monte Carlo version. And I don't remember when that stopped, maybe 10 or 15 years ago. I'm not sure when it stopped, but, but that, that was a nice, especially if you came with your girlfriend or wife or something, that was, that made up for all these hours where, you know, you were pretty unavailable. The composition of the playing room, of the players in the playing room changed dramatically in few different ways. One, it was a predominantly gambler uh, community at the time. Tons of money games were taking place. Tournament sometimes was almost taken as a secondary. When I started to play, it was a very different kind of players down here than it's now, you know. Back then, it was more the high society, more the rich people that played. So everyone thought they were the best. And when they lost, they all thought they were unlucky. There used to be styles of play, there is not. There's like the right play and the wrong play. The way you play a good player or a bad player is not the same, but there is a, and more or less objectively, right play and a wrong play. There used to be more characters for sure. And there were probably more, more, more tells, you know. Now you have more uh, guys that just sit with their headphones and just completely tune out and show or have very little personality over the board, you know. They have used to have much more personality. Back then, it was hard to be good because uh, you didn't have a gotten any help. Today, you have a X key, you sit with a computer and you practice for six months and you can come down here and have a chance. I came to Monte Carlo to play in the World Championships, the biggest tournament, but I didn't really care about winning, you know. I care about challenging whoever they say is the best. I like the challenge. I think many of the top players, they, you know, you just like the challenge. You prefer not to play the top players in the opening rounds, but you know if you go far enough, you're gonna face you know, some of the top 10 players. And I think most of the elite players really like that challenge. In backgammon, you always feel challenged, and that's what also the players like, just to feel the challenge, just to achieve something what you feel is impossible, and you can always do better, you can always be better than you are now. Nick Blazier here with the warm-up show for your finals of the 53rd Backgammon World Championship here in Monte Carlo, Monaco. And I am so excited to present to you Sander Lilov versus Denyek Ziska. Okay, so, okay, well played, Sanyak. He found yeah. the best play. Oh, Ooh, there's the, the back, back shot. The under oh. <laughs> wow, did Devastation. You see it, I did. I did. That was Sanders, like, uh, what do you call this rolling <laughs> style? He dropped that on Wilcox a couple of times and it was devastating. That was the force. That was the force roll. Yeah, that exactly. Saved him from two and a half percent. Exactly. That was the reverse roll. <laughs> How'd you feel on average that your backhands were working? Were they showing up the way you needed? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've had a little practice here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Any double will do. Oh, shit. Big swing. To get two extra. Extra points on this one. Oh, <laughs> <it's> so <laughs> They're clapping in the room. <laughs> oh, was it the on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> Sandra gives him the high five. <laughs> Oh, they're having way too much fun. Stenic really it. doesn't want to see a double. Okay. Did he go for the? Oh, okay. I think it was the drop and not the back. The drop, yeah. not not so good. You know, <laughs> match was exciting, especially at the beginning before the bad game started. I felt really good about the bad game. I mean, for sure, I'm. Oh, well, I'm pretty sure I was the favorite, but yeah. in equity because I have a lot of <laughs> bad game and game and chances to lose. <laughs> and five two, not right. the best, but can still survive this one to get mm -hmm. there. Oh. oh. Fours are better to stay alive. Oh, uh, come on. Lots of time to shake him up here. <laughs> okay. It's worth to uh, spend some time. <laughs> a full 22 seconds of bank to let Sander sweat here for a little while. <laughs> a little smirk okay, there. Okay, okay. You, you can spend one minute, two minutes, no problem. <laughs> I'd be tired by sure. now. I don't know if I could yeah. keep shaking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a sweat for the crowd here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can give him water. Oh, can he do it? I'm rooting for him. I need more back end oh. today. I think Akiko did the same thing. Did she? Before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not World Championship. It's okay. a tournament in Japan. Okay. As uh, a final. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it oh, th- takes a break. <laughs> 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 all right, three okay. more minutes are rolling now. We got to get it all set up again. Uh, just a little bit off on the end. Full gray dice. If he can land a set in the right side of the board, he's going to stay alive here. <laughs> Fours are better. And ace is up. No good. Oh, what a well played match by both. Super exciting. And Sander Lilov going to be your world champion. This year, 2022. We played serious match. You know, we both wanted to win so bad. I yeah. mean, this is like the title is super, super important. Yeah. And I did my best, but unfortunately, it turned out how it turned out. I was very lucky, you know, he was getting a lot of bad rolls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a dice game in the end. That's how it goes, right? right? Both yeah, have the right, shot at uh, it. Yep. Tough break for Zdenek. Amazing run for him to get this far and to come back through after losing through the second yeah. chance bracket. That's a game that That's I think good. we could study for weeks, pretty much. You know, there are a lot of interesting decisions in there. Back I hope that then. I can uh, review the matches later, and maybe you teach me some. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it, but we'll see. We'll see. Let me know. Thank Congratulations you. again. Yeah. <laughs> What actually I start taking more from backgammon is the social element. Backgammon's been incredibly important to me. Here's the bottom line. This is fun. It's like being president. Once you're the president, you're always president. Once you're a world champion, you're always a world champion.